Praise the Lord. I thank God for life today. Can we lift our hands and thank Him? He's given us life. He's given us health. He's given us strength. He's given us passion. He's given us vision. And above all, He's given us His salvation. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise for that. I, I don't... I, I, I want to pray for you. I hope you're okay, but myself, I'm okay. I'm going to heaven, and I'm happy about it. <laughs> I'm not going yet. There's a lot of work to do, and we have a couple of more decades at least, I hope. Yeah? Hello? Before the Lord comes. And today I want to speak on something amazingly liberating that people really need to, to know and understand. Let's look in our Bibles at the book of 3rd John, the epistle of John. This, it says, The elder to the well-beloved Gaius, who I love in the truth. I found out that, I found out that um, if this guy named Gaius, I had never met someone named Gaius my whole life, but I met one in Nigeria. And this mother was probably smart that she liked the scripture, so she named her Nigerian boy Gaius. But Gaius was really kind of an Italian-European name. But, but I know that this was not just for him. So many years ago, you see in the, in the scripture there's a space above there. There's a big white space. So the Lord said to me, write your name there. So I put a little arrow above Gaius. I didn't cross it out. I just put an arrow above it. And I said, Thomas Manton IV, this is for me. And it became so real for me, to me over the years. To the well-beloved Gaius, who I love in the truth. Everybody say truth. He said, now, beloved, King James said, I wish. New King James said, I pray. The NIV says, I desire that you prosper above everything else that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. And uh, the New King James says, just as your soul prospers. But I kind of like King James even because it's a measuring, it's a measuring word. Three things here. You need prosperity to live. People think it's a big word. It's a bad word. It's not a bad word. Poverty is the bad word. Someone say poverty is the bad word. Pro say prosperity is the good word. Now, if I was the devil, and I'm not, of course, I would want to throw as much mud on the word prosperity as I could to get people to stay away from it or think it's some, there's something wrong there. Even the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, I think it is, where uh, he said, you rich men, weep and howl. But, he, but there's, a, there's a promise in there that says they should humble themselves and try to live right. It's in there somewhere. So it's not just like because you're rich, you're just automatically evil. See, people, people have thought that in the church. Lift your hands, say, I rebuke all error out of my mind, all ignorance out of, your, out of my mind. It's going, it's going, it's going. I need to understand the scripture. The Bible is clear from Genesis to Revelation. We, his people, are to be blessed. Period, kabisa, full stop, end of the story. Lift your hands, say, that's for me. <laughs> uh, poverty was not in God's program for you. Oh, no. I like to say that poverty is the offspring of evil. 
It's like the father Satan and the mother sin came together and produced a cursed thing. Everything about poverty is wrong. It makes people unhealthy. It makes people deranged in their mind. It makes you uncomfortable. It's a product of the curse. Lift your hand and say, the curse is broken. Off my life. You can look at something and feel how it's bad by looking at it in the, in, by the Spirit of God. What was said here, the po poverty is the state of mind. It, it, it shouldn't be our reality. It's, it's, it's a way of thinking that people think wrongly. And by the Holy Ghost, I want to work on killing this thing. Ignorance is costly. Knowledge is, is, uh, knowledge is empowering. The scripture says by lack of knowledge, people are destroyed. Hosea 4, 6 says too, it says, through knowledge the just will be delivered. Isaiah 11, 12 says, uh, Isaiah 11, 2 says, uh, the spirit of the Lord has attributes of the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, which is strength, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And we see the cross uh, uh, reference to that in Revelation 5, 12. That Jesus said, I took back the thing that the devil stole from Adam, power and riches and wisdom and strength, which is might again, it's the same word. And then, blessing, glory and honor, glory, honor and blessing given to, the, to my people. He didn't say, it's for me. Why does Jesus need these things? He's God. When he walked on the earth, they said, oh, good master. He said, don't call me good. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because he was walking on the earth with men, and he knows what is in men. And one came to worship him, and he said, no, I have not been resurrected. Stay back. But now he's seated in, the, in heaven at the right hand of the Father. And he says, I took these things back. Does Jesus need power? No, he has it. He's God. Does he need riches and wisdom? No, he's all of those things. Jesus just doesn't give life. He is life. The scripture calls him, I think it's in John 14, uh, he's the way, the truth, and the life. He doesn't have those things, he is those things. Lift your hands, say, I'm one with the king who has everything. Oh, yes. You see, we need to work on our mind in this thing. This is the renewing of the mind. Romans 12, 1, 2, and 3 says, Be not conformed to this world with all its evil, and it's lust and corruptions, and it's poverty and degradation and despair and curses and the works of darkness. But, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind how? To the word of God. This right here. Now the scripture says, beloved. That's Thomas. That's you. What's your name? You have your Bible? Let me see your Bible. Who has a Bible? Hold it up. Oh, look at these people got their Bibles. Okay, right there. Above there. Do you have a pen? And right there, your name in the white space. I want to show you. You see the white space there? All up here above, all here, you have plenty of room. Write your name there. And even put a signature on top. Sign the contract. Some people know the word, but they haven't co communed with the word and become one with it. And it hasn't worked for them enough yet because they didn't get it like that. And this is important. Write your name there. 
God is wanting us to take seriously this covenant that he gave in his word, which is a contract to us as people. And when you start to do that, my friend, you may not see the results you want of everything to change in the next five minutes or the next five days or even the next five months. But if you stay with it, continue in my word, John 8, 31, then you're my disciples indeed. And things will be... Well, things will begin to manifest. Hold your Bible up. Tell the devil, hey devil, you see this? What you got to say about it? You're, 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 you're an idiot. You know, you, 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 know, you know, he knows the power of this book. But he doesn't care about you. He cares about Christ in you, the hope of glory. What scares the devil is God's power. And a man or a woman who has authority that knows the word. That's it. You speak the word out of your mouth. Don't just pray, oh God, help me, give me something, help me, oh God, oh God. Uh, I'm like a victim, I, I, I have bad situations, oh God, oh God. God looks at you and goes, ah, oh, you're like a child. Why are you like a child? Crying for something you see, you want. You're like a child. Remember Galatians 4, verse 1. It said, you differ nothing then but from a child, though you be Lord of all. And Jesus, Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, even the, in Scripture, even the God of gods. Small l, small k, small g, that's us, his people. Psalm 82 said you, you're in the congregation Judging amongst the gods. Jesus then said in the New Testament, don't you know that it was said that ye are gods? Small g. That goes back to the reference of Genesis 1, 26, when Elohim, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the word Elohim is there, he said, I, I make you in my own image after my own likeness. That's how I created you. Would God live in a, in, a, in a terrible lifestyle? He can't. He has everything. Look at the patriarchs. I don't want to scare, I don't want to scare people, but I'm going to tell you something scripturally. It's probably very powerful. <laughs> the, the Bible is clear. All of the patriarchs, uh, apostle, Bishop, all of the patriarchs in the Bible were multi-billionaires. Billionaires, son. Billion. Yeah, you're still stuck on, you said million. You see, I got to pray for you. Hit yourself in the head and say, oh my God. Say, OMG. Oh, Jesus, help me. Help this mind of mine. Hit yourself in the chest and touch your heart and say, hey God, come on. I got to come up higher now. This is, what am I doing? He said in Galatians 4, 1 again, you differ nothing but then from but a, a servant or a child, though you be Lord of all. In other words, everything is yours. As the Father sent me, so I send you, Jesus said. He said it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom, yes? Freely you receive all things. All things are mine, says the Lord, therefore all things are thine. Now you have to ask a question, how much do you want? How do you want to live? How do you want to carry on? Again, as I built a little foundation yesterday, the, the big picture is not your personal life. The big picture is touching the world. But you can't do it from a lacking life, a frustrated life. You can't do enough. Yes or yes? Yes or yes? 
I'm waiting for the yes. Yes or yes? Say yes. yes. Are you okay? Ukosawa? Ikosawa, Nikosawa. Ukosawa? Hit your neighbor and say, hey. Are you okay? How much do you want? What do you want? You can have everything. The lack of knowledge is the destroyer. Somebody said what you don't know can't hurt you. Not true. What you don't know can be a killer. Because you had ignorance in a certain area, you didn't know how to get something that you were supposed to have. Hello? So, where do we go from here? Renew your mind and say that everything that God has ordained, I'm supposed to have it all. But not for my own benefit. God will take care of me. Very well, he takes care of me. But I want to care for the world. I want to have so I can give. The purpose of prosperity, a definition, if I could give a definition, is this. It's having enough of God's supply to fulfill his will and his plan. Do you know what his plan is for you? Wave your hand if you know his plan. Wow. Do you know what God has ordained for you? Now how are you going to get it done? We were discussing this. There's a good person and there's the right person. You need the right person. But if you don't feel good about yourself, and your self-esteem is all messed up, because of all your shame and poverty and, and hard situations, your mind is not right, you can't see your way out of the dark cloud. Most people are going through life every day just looking for, to survive. Tools for survival. That was never the plan of God for us. We're not supposed to survive, we're supposed to thrive. Someone say praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. You're awful quiet. Can you lift your hands and celebrate? Let's do that for a minute. Lift your hands up, let's celebrate. Celebrate the goodness of God. Your life is supposed to be a, a thriving place of blessing and success and excellence. Everything you touch should prosper. Everything you set your hand to will be successful. Isaiah 48, 17, he said, I'm the Lord your God who teaches you how to profit as I lead you in the way you should go. The blessed man, the blessed life is a product of the hand of God. Not the hand of man and definitely not the hand of the devil. Remember the man at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5. He said, uh, I had no man to help me. Jesus said, now I'm here. So just pick up your bed and walk. The man was shocked, but he, was, he had power to get up and walk. When Jesus shows up in your life, everything will change. Lift your hand up and say, Lord, please give me your visitation. I want, I want you to visit my life. I want you to come and talk to me. I want you to come and visit me. And speak to me about my calling, my purpose, my gift, my talent. Yes. I tell you this, when your mind is deranged by all kinds of bad situations, you can't focus on the vision that God's given you. All you're thinking about all the time is your stress levels. About how to get this or how to get that. That's an impoverished state of living. 
The Lord never ordained that for us. Let's pray right now. Just, just put your hands out like you're, you're, you're fighting something and say, Lord, I'm going to break all this stuff. I'm going to break everything that's oppressing me, everything that's in my way. I need to move forward. I need to work. My heart is filled. My heart is overflowing with vision and passion to touch the world, to do what needs to be done. To, to, and I want to see people's lives manifesting the greatness of God. Now we're going to begin to see the power of His excellence when we clear the clutter out of the way, remove the clouds out of the way, and begin to see the horizons ahead of how much is possible. You can only do that when you begin to jump out of where you are and focus on the thing that God has set before you. He said, see I have set before you this day life. Choose it and live. Job 36, 11. Very powerful. It said, if you serve the Lord gladly, You'll, you'll spend your days in pleasures and your life, your life and your days in pleasure and prosperity. The next verse says, but if you refuse, your life will be a disaster. That's also the same principle seen in Isaiah 119 and 20. Isaiah 119 says, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Can I tell you, even if you think you don't have enough money yet or whatever, God has land for you. God has people for you. God has provisions for you. God has offices for you, for your business. God has promotion for you in your career life. God has a great ministry for you that are called to the, the fivefold ministry. And it, it should flourish. When you're really serious about it, God gets serious about helping you. Seriousness, passion, compassion for who he's giving you compassion for. All this reproduces itself into something great. And the responsibility that we have is very serious. Can you imagine standing before God and not having fulfilled your, your mission or your assignment? Oh, it's terrible. I think about it every day, more so these days. I think about it every day. Lift your hands and say, Father, forgive me, please, for wasting any time. Father, let me redeem the time, for the days are evil. The clock is ticking. Things are moving. I must move now. Help me, Lord. Take my hand. Take my hand. Deliver me from every curse. Deliver me from every evil word. Isaiah 54, 17 said, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against you shall, you shall condemn it, for this is your heritage as a servant of the Lord. And I tell you, some words that have been spoken over your life that were evil, I nullify them right now. Lift your hands and receive this right now. Every word, take it captive and take it and throw it back to the sender. And say, you're not going to, you're not going to afflict me. Any witchcraft, any occultism, any bondage, anybody, anybody that hate, was hating on the life of a person, you can destroy all those things in the realm of the spirit and walk free. But you first have to get, you have to get the revelation. I love the fact that God has filled my heart and filled me with the anointing and his power to speak this to you. Because sometimes you, you don't know because you haven't heard a teacher. A teacher is a leader to take you into the promised land. Not to shout and do entertainment. That's not church. The Lord spoke to me. And I started to write a book about it years ago, but I didn't, I didn't, get, I didn't get to finish it. I, 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 maybe one day I'll do it. The purpose of the church. The Lord said to me a definition from his own mind. You want to hear what it is? He said, my church, my house, is to be a place of training for reigning. It's a place for me to train people to be raised up. It's a place where I'll manifest my glory and my revelation and feed my sheep and build them up that they can move. 
for the lion to feed the lions that we can all run and take the territories. If that's not happening, we really haven't had true church. Thank, let, let's thank God for this house because this house is like that. Lift your hands up. Say thank you, Lord, for this place. A training center full of revelation, full of understanding, full of wisdom. When you're in an environment, when you're in an environment like that, you begin to grow. I want to tell you there's two killers out there. Three, sickness and disease, poverty, and ignorance. Ignorance means to not know something. And it's very costly to not know. In the legal world, they say ignorance of the law is no excuse. You're still accountable to it. You're supposed to know. You're supposed to know. Hold your Bible up close to yourself and say, Lord, this word is my guide. This word is my guide. This word is the director of my life. If I take heed according to this word, everything will begin to work well for me. I will live long and prosper. I shall never die. I shall never lack. I shall never have any calamity come my way. I'm dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. I'm abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. And I'll say of the Lord, He's my refuge, my God, my mighty shield and buckler, my high tower, my the strength of my life. I will fear no one, and no evil shall be able to touch me. No terror by day, no waster at noonday, or terror by night. Nothing can infiltrate my world. No devils can live in my house. And everything that's... I felt this anointing when I was coming on the way here. I felt it. I felt it. The power of God is being released to the people of God to break them free from all oppressions. And many are the product of their environment. People have spoken evil over you. They've done evil things. They've had agendas over you. They didn't want you to rise and succeed. They didn't want you to rise up. They wanted to, people want to control people. I break all that in Jesus' name. That was never for you. You are a free person. Your mind is supposed to be clear to think the thoughts of God. And you can't do it enough when you're all bound up with all kinds of situations. Jesus, if you can't pay your rent, you got somebody bothering you for the money, it can drive you crazy. Yeah. Am I right? I know I am. And you're all stressed about that. You can't think about God. You, you, you feel a lack of peace. You're all unsettled. How on earth are you going to be, pro how you, how, how are you going to be progressive? How are you going to make progress like that? He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Jireh. I found the Hebrew definition of Jireh, which is powerful. It means in a Hebrew Definition of the word Yireh, Jireh, the name of God. It says, uh, the Jews said, they said, He's our father, our overseer, and He will, He's the one who sees our future and He will see to it that it happens. The visionary gave us the vision. And now we need to walk it out. And the just shall live by faith. Your faith plays a big part. Mark 11.22 says, have the faith of God. Mark 11.23 says, speak to the mountain and it will obey you if you doubt not. And believe in your heart that it will move, it will move. Mark 11.24 said, the things you desire, pray for them and believe you receive them and you'll have them. And Mark 11:25 said, when you stand praying, forgive everyone who's wronged you. You can't hold unforgiveness. It creates bitterness. Lift your hands and say, I forgive everybody, Father, that's ever 
done anything wrong against me. I forgive them again. Forgiveness is a gift that Jesus gave to us for our own benefit. That's why he so often said, forgive, forgive, forgive. Peter said, this guy did this, should I forgive him? Jesus said, yes. Seven times 70, which is 490 times. Forgive, forgive, forgive. If a man repents, forgive him. If he doesn't repent, forgive him. It, forgiveness frees you from the evil situation. But it doesn't absolve the guilty from their guilt. The guilty person still has to account for what they did. But when you forgive them, it doesn't affect you anymore. Lift your hands and say, I forgive everybody. No matter how bad it was. No matter what they did, I don't care. I'm free from them. They can't hold me. I won't hold a grudge against anyone. I'll show love and kindness to everyone. That's how I live. I'm free. Now this thing about poverty again. It's a very strong demonic force. One way, that, let me give you three keys. What, first way is, is by studying the word and applying the word to the situation. Speaking it out of your mouth. That you're not going to live like that. You're going to go to a higher place. And then you need to find the people that can guide you out. And you need to dream about a place where you'd be better off. You need to see it in your mind and speak it. When you begin to do that, you now activate the, the laws of things in the spirit where things will begin to happen for you. There's an old practical saying that says, where there's a will, there's a way. I'll give you a powerful statement. When the heart decides the destination, especially by the vision of God, the mind and other people and situations will devise the roadmap on how to get there. It first began in the heart. The vision is the biggest thing. Let's pray again. Let's all pray. Father, thank you for the vision. The vision will keep you alive even through the hardest circumstances. The vision of God will keep you strong in the hardest of situations. The vision of God will lead you out of every dark place. It will. You need to take action. No action. No attraction. Right? Yes. Action. A C T I O N. It's a big word. James said, and I love what James says, very practical point. He said, You say you have faith. Fine. I'll show you my faith by what I do. We are to be proof producers. Some of might say, I don't have enough respect from people. I don't, I don't see people showing favor. Two things to do about that. Start showing favor to other people. Become a generous person. Start to give and help others. And then... Start to see yourself as a champion. To say, Lord, I'm going to fulfill this mission and you have everything that I need for it. Numbers 13.33, powerful scripture. It says, we saw ourselves as grasshoppers and so we were in their eyes. As you see yourself, so are you. Proverbs 23, 7. As a person thinks, so are they. You need to cultivate this mind. Paul said in the epistle, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. 
1 Corinthians 2, 9 said, Eyes not seen, ears not heard, nor said it to the heart of man, the great things that God's prepared for those who love him. But verse 10, but he's revealed these things to us by his spirit. And verse 16, but we have the mind of Christ. The same spirit. The same spirit, the Holy Ghost, that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. Is that powerful? Lift your hand and say, thank God. I receive. Hallelujah. Just let's pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute. Pray over this. You've been overlooked too long. You've been overlooked too long. You don't need to be staying in a place of obscurity. God wants to bring you into a place of greatness. A place of productivity and greatness. But you need to clear the clutter. You need to clear all the, all the dark clouds away. You need to get out of the wrong environments. The Lord spoke to me, and I wrote it in my book on Keys to Successful Living. It's a very powerful book here that I wrote. And I have several others. Uh, some, many of these are sold out. Success Strategies. Some prophecies for Kenya. People love this one. Uh, uh, some things about the office of the prophet, the laws of success, the benefits of excellence, uh, the focus factor. Yes, you know what? The only reason men fail is because of broken focus. And this great book, which we have copies of here today, if you'd like to get them even in these meetings, you can get them. We can uh, work about how you can get those. Uh, I wrote a principle here. The Lord said to me, my son, I'm going to tell you something, and I want you, to tell, I want you to tell my people this, and I've done it all over the world, on all six continents of the world, I've, I've said this. He said, son, your environment will either pollute you or promote you, depending on what it is. Your environment will either pollute you or promote you, depending on what it is. If you're in a bad environment, you're gonna, it's going to rub off on you. If you want to break out of bad situations, you need, to, you need to resign and step out of it. Lift your hands and say, I resign from poverty. I resign from the wrong people. I resign, I resign from the wrong environments. And another principle, the atmosphere you create determines the product you produce. The atmosphere you create determines the product you produce. And that goes in line with action and attraction. The action of good productivity will produce favor. I started to give you a, a, a solution for the problem you're having about being overlooked. If you start to show your seriousness first to God and even to yourself and then others begin to see it and you're doing things, let me tell you the right people will catch up with you. People are attracted to winners and they're repelled by losers. Yes or yes? Everybody loves a winner. Proverbs says the rich man, his wealth is his strong city. The rich has many friends. <laughs> and Proverbs 10.22 said the blessing of the Lord makes me rich. I didn't write that. Solomon wrote that by the Holy Ghost, son of his father David. Imagine. Imagine. You can only go so far as you can see. And Proverbs continues by saying, the poor man, even his neighbor hates him. 
Na methali inaelewa kusema ya kwamba ah masikini hata jirani wanamtoroka. But they say I'm going to glorify God by getting rich. Why? Why? Who needs something just materially? We don't need that. We need provision to produce the mission to the world. Let's all stand on our feet and begin to pray right now for a minute. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just begin to pray in the spirit right now. Shalabasa. Everybody standing, please. Everybody standing, quickly. Shakaraba rechekali tu sukola chala taya taya. There was a poor man in, in Ecclesiastes 9:16 that had great wisdom, but no one regarded his words because he wasn't a successful man. The more successful you become, the more you get. The principle of the Bible is that he who has will be given more. So your job is to do things enough that you can begin to move forward. And then God will begin to add to you when he sees your seriousness. Did you get that? Seriousness and action will produce what you want. God bless you. I'm Thomas Manton IV. We'll see you later. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.